So check this out. The Holy Spirit told me that I was going to see these white feathers. The very next day, I found a white feather on my living room floor. Now, the only thing we have that's white feathered around here is a chicken outside, and he's never been in the house, and we don't have chicken feathers in the house. So the next day, I find another white feather, completely different size, completely different shape, in a completely different area. This went on for seven days, and the seven, number seven, biblically, is the number of completion. Imagine that. Imagine that. Hello, Bezel T3. Perhaps you've never heard of him. I hadn't until a subscriber sent me a link to a video of him where he declares that he has had an angelic visitation. Now, we'll get to that in a moment. His name is Dan Moeller Jr., and he fancies himself as a Christian hip hop artist. He considers himself a public speaker and influencer and, of course, asks for your financial support on his website. You see, Dan is a preacher's kid, right, a PK, who went off the rails and got into gangs and drugs. He explains this on his website uh, with a rather annoying passing cloud loop in the background, and he writes the following. Uh, JR's message combined with his music and powerful testimony of the struggle faced growing up in the church, backsliding, running the streets with gang affiliates, facing a 12-year drug addiction, back to redemption are very evident in his lyrics. So now, with such a powerful testimony, it's a foregone conclusion that Dan Jr. had to go into full-time ministry with his hip-hop music and his public speaking and his influencing. And we read further that Dan Jr. is the biological son of well-known itinerant preacher Dan Moeller. And just who is Dan Moeller? Well, he's uh, the biological dad, and he looks an awful lot like the actor Gary Busey. Now, he is an itinerant preacher and was at one time a pastor of the church, I'm not sure which one, uh, where Todd White turned over a new leaf. Here's how he explains it. He came in the back door of the church, and you could tell he was distraught. I was coming from the restroom and he said, I said, hey, man, can I help you? He said, I just need to talk to somebody. And he goes on and on. So here we have Dan Moeller, who is mentored by, uh, or I'm sure, who, who is the mentor to Todd White. And uh, Dan Moeller Jr. is sandwiched in the middle of those two. Trouble afoot. Now, just to give you a taste of the whack teaching that comes from Dan Moeller Jr.'s biological dad, Listen to this. My whole life growing up, I was told that Jesus died on the cross because I was a sinner. And it left me a forgiven sinner. Okay, yeah. The gospel is the perfect life, sacrificial death, and glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. By placing one's trust in his person and work, the ungodly or wicked person, as the Apostle Paul puts it in Romans, is declared not guilty or justified. Nobody ever told me that he died on the cross to restore my purpose and potential and destiny, that he actually died on the cross because he saw great value in what I could be when he lived inside of me. Okay, so Jesus died on the cross so that we could recover our purpose and destiny? Um, the Bible paints a much different picture. Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, you know, children of wrath, Christ died for us. And, and how does Paul describe us while we were still sinners? Well, I just gave a little bit of it away. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, follow, following the prince of the power of the air, 
the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we, among whom we all once lived in the pas- passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were by nature children of, lo- of wrath like the rest of mankind. But Dan Sr. says he died to restore our purpose and destiny. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You don't, you don't have to come at somebody's depravity. You teach what they're called to be and created to be. And the goodness of God gets into you and brings change to you. That is a complete denial of the function of the law and the gospel. The law of God is good. By obeying it, we come closest to the image of God himself. But because of both original and actual sins, we find ourselves in the same place as was described by Paul in Ephesians, carrying out the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. You see, without the bad news, you know, that the law gives us, who, uh, th- that the law demands that we live perfectly, but can't give us the power to perform what it demands of us. You see, without that bad news that we are children of wrath, the good news of the gospel just doesn't have the the importance or the the significance it rightly deserves. Now, here is some more serious error, error from Dan Jr.'s dad. We're teaching God's in control, and it sounds blasphemous when we say he's not. What we're trying to say is that everything that happens is not the will of God. Power of life and death is in your tongue. One verse out of context. You see, the tongue, as it is used in Proverbs, is a picture of what resides in the the heart and the mind of fallen man. James 3, 6, he writes, The tongue is also a fire, a world of wickedness among the parts of the body. It pollutes the whole person, sets the course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. But to say that God uh, does not will or, or ordain everything is to say that God is not in control of all that he has created. Just what are the implications of that? Men are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. If everything's God's administrative choice, then why are we being destroyed for the lack of knowledge? We'd be destroyed for God's choice. Let's get the knowledge and stop destruction. <laughs> Now, I've got to give it to Dan. He talks convincingly and passionately, but if you slow it down, it simply doesn't jive with Scripture. Dan is referencing Hosea 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, but it goes on, because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you, says God, from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. You see, these verses indict the priesthood for rejecting God's commands and instead tolerating idol worship and and immorality on the part of God's people. If certain words and certain knowledge overrule God's sovereignty, well, well then God, the God of the Bible, is an impotent God who cannot manage what it is that he created. But scripture tells us otherwise. Isaiah 45, 7. The one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating disaster. I am the Lord who does all these things. In Ephesians 1.11 this time, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In Colossians 1.16 and 17, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I mean, it could not be more clear. God, the Father, through the eternal Son, created and sustains all things through, uh, the, through the word of his power. And yet so, God is not the author of evil. Evil comes from the disobedience of his creatures. First, the angelic realm disobeyed, and a third of them fell. And then from the rebellion of our first parents, Adam and Eve. Now, let's get to to Dan Jr. and the video I was sent by a subscriber. 
Hey, what is up YouTube? God bless you guys. Welcome back to my channel. So I don't share a lot of stories like this. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot of teaching today. I just want to share a story. There'll be a little bit of teaching in it, I'm sure. But uh, my wife and I had an angel, at least one angel, visit our home and it was super obvious. <laughs> All right, so the claim here is that an angel visited Dan Jr.'s home. He says, no doubt, no doubt about it. I'm a little tongue-tied today. No doubt about it, it actually happened. Okay, so let's allow Dan Jr. to elaborate on this. He begins by speaking about getting sick with pneumonia as a way of Satan trying to take him out. We continue. But about a week and a half before that had happened, I was sitting in this exact chair where I'm sitting right now, and I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and tell me that I was going to encounter an angel's presence. Okay, so Dan claims that he felt the Holy Spirit say. Well, that's weird. Uh, how does one feel a direct statement such as, you will encounter an angel's presence from the Holy Spirit. And I kind of just blew it off as like my own thoughts, like, hmm, that's kind of strange. But then it ended up happening. Okay, now that would be quite extraordinary. Nowhere in scripture can I think of one time where the Holy Spirit tells someone to be on the lookout or expect an angelic visitation. So check this out. I actually have this picture somebody painted Hopefully you guys can see it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the enemy, okay. and you have an angel blocking the enemy. And then this is supposed to be me. With a hoodie. <laughs> and there's another angel guarding it. So I want to read you guys a couple, if you guys can see that. So I want to read you guys a couple scriptures real quick from the Bible. Okay, well, I'm encouraged that Dan is going to read from the Bible and not the Koran or the Book of Mormon. I am highly suspect of that painting having anything to do with Dan's supposed heads up from the Holy Spirit that he will be visited by an angel. Now, here comes Dan Jr.'s first proof text that he tries uh, to use to make his case. Uh, so for Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12, it says, For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against stone. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Those words, of course, were used by Satan to try to mess with Jesus. That's probably how they're most uh, well known. But it comes from Psalm 91, and it's about God's protection and overshadowing of his people, no matter what may come our way in this life. God's ultimate purposes for us will not be thwarted. It is God who finishes the psalm. He says, to the one who knows my name, I will always protect him. Verse 15, when he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. You see, there's a myth of uh, like a special guardian angel for each individual. And, and it's, it's come from this verse as, as well as other ones. But that is not a biblical teaching. It seems as though uh, Dan Jr. has not quite worked this out yet. Daniel 6.22, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth and they have not harmed me. Mm, that's another one. Mm. Now, are we to surmise from that passage that we can go into a den of lions and be assured a guardian angel will protect us? I mean, I don't think so. This is from Fox's Book of Martyrs. I quote, when Germanic, uh, Germanicus, a young man and true Christian, was delivered to the wild lions on account of his faith, he behaved with such astonishing uh, courage that several pagans were converted to the faith that inspired such bravery. We can surmise from that that, yes, uh, Germanicus was eaten by lions. Check this out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fire... God sent an angel to protect them. So angel visitation is totally true. So these specific historical redemptive accounts prove that angelic visitations are totally true for, for Dan Jr. And therefore, we should believe him about his visitation. Now, this is an odd one to add to, add to his uh, proof text mix. 
Let's look at this passage very quickly. Daniel 3, 20, uh, 23 through 25. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the middle of the furnace and blazing fire still tied up. They were tied up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and stood up quickly and he said to his counselors, was it not three men that we threw bound into the middle of the fire? They replied to the king, absolutely, O king. And he responded, look, I see four men united and walking about in the middle of the fire, unharmed. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. So what exactly did King Nebuchadnezzar see in the fire with the three men? Well, the early church interpretation taught that it was a Christophany, meaning a pre-incarnate appearance of the second person of the Trinity. Now, there's no way to actually know that for sure. So, we must focus on the fact that it was the same angel of God's presence who watched over God's people in the Exodus, and it's the same angel here who watched over these three Babylonian captives. So, where does Dan Jr. go to give evidence that he actually had an angelic visitation? Okay, let's, let's find out. But check this out. So, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me that I was going to have an angel encounter. And it's amazing because the whole multifocal pneumonia ended up being just a spiritual attack. It was demonic warfare. My wife and I broke the chains off of that stuff. We grew so much spiritually through that entire encounter. Uh -huh. It was incredible, but wow. here's what I want to talk about. Okay, we're ready. I was told by the Lord that I was going to find white feathers in my house. <laughs> okay, white feathers in his house. Okay, now here is where my BS detection meter, pardon my French, begins to go to the red line. Let's go on. So check this out. The Holy Spirit told me that I was going to see these white feathers. The very next day, I found a white feather on my living room floor. Now, the only thing we have that's white feathered around here is a chicken outside, and he's never been in the house, and we don't have chicken feathers in the house. So the next day, I find another white feather, completely different size, completely different shape, Who knew? in a completely different area. Who knew? This went on for seven days, and the seven number seven, biblically, is the number of completion. Imagine that. Imagine that indeed. <laughs> now I ask you, what on earth does white feathers appearing in Dan Jr.'s house have anything to do with the visitation of an angel into his house? Well, let me, let me remind you of that. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. <laughs> Now, let's get this straightened out. There are ranks of angels. I think we see that from Scripture, from the highest to the lowest in terms of their function. Those called angels or messengers are what Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, calls ministering spirits. Ephesians 1 speaks of Jesus being far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, perhaps a reference to the levels of angels or, or of course, demons. The only angelic beings that are said to have wings are the cherubim and the seraphim, both of whom are focused, their, their main task is bringing attention to God's glory and majesty, not spreading feathers in Dan Jr.'s house. And mind you, I sat the feathers on the dresser and they disappeared, which is wild, wild. Now, it's right about here that you start asking yourself, is this guy for real or is he simply joshing us? So it's incredible what we can tap into. I remember when I was in Life Changers Outreach Program back in 2015, we had a prophetic word and actually like a, a modern day prophet speaking over the church. And mm. he said that people were gonna begin to see gold dust in their Bibles uh, and they started dust. to find gold dust in their Bibles. Sure. He also told us that we were gonna see white feathers around the property and a bunch of the students and the staff began to see white feathers. Huh. Okay, this whole video has nothing whatsoever to do with what Christianity is actually all about, which is Jesus Christ himself. Dan Jr. has not mentioned Jesus once, not even once. So I wanna challenge you guys today to go deeper and not just seek the supernatural, seek God, 
But after you see God, he'll begin to do things in your life. I really believe mm-hmm. if you're watching this video and you want to see things in the spirit, he will grant you that. I've been in worship services already where I was like, God, let your fire fall. Let your presence fill this place. And I physically saw fire coming off the ceiling, like right. real fire. It wasn't in the spirit. It wasn't in my mind. It wasn't made up. It was legitimate fire where it looked like you needed a fire department to come put it out. But nobody else could see it. <laughs> Now, I want to say two things here. Uh, and, and first, it has nothing to do with the two things. The camera angle that he is using is very, very annoying. He's looking down <laughs> on his audience. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I want to apologize to every angelic being who has been reduced to a sideshow act in Dan Moeller Jr.'s video. If Dan Jr. could actually see an angelic being... Instead of focusing in on feathers, he would be balled up in a quivering mass in the corner with overwhelming fear. Now, one more clip before the second thing. But it was so incredible. He got up on stage and started to preach. And after worship, I was such in the presence of God. Like, it was just amazing, like vibrating. It was just so awesome, Mm -hmm. right? I saw smoke, physical, tangible smoke around him, but nobody else could see it. And when I would blink, it would go away. But then when I would focus again, it would come back. And it happened for a matter of about two minutes, 10 times on and off, literally 10 times. I counted. I was like, this is insane, right? (laughs) Okay. That was his smoke, by the way, not mine. I didn't add that. He did. (laughs) Okay. Now, the second thing. Both he, his dad, and Todd White are false teachers and are to be avoided at all cost. Don't fall for these supposed super apostles who attempt to bring some some special word from God apart from what Scripture actually teaches. Instead, we need to pray for them that they may be saved from this gross deviation from true Christianity that only harms instead of heals the wounds of God's people which only the gospel of Jesus Christ can bring. I mean, really, saying you were visited by an angel because you found feathers in your house? (laughs) Remember, angels are messengers whose job it is to minister to those who will inherit salvation through the proclamation of the gospel. And sadly, there was no gospel here, only frivolous distractions.